In 2002, scientists discovered a chemical in food called acrylamide. Acrylamide, little was known about acrylamide, but subsequent investigation indicted acrylamide as a possible genotoxic or, or actually a toxic substance that could be associated with degenerative diseases, including cancer and cardiovascular disease. Uh, now, you, uh, acrylamide is basically, it, can, it, it occurs as a reaction in food. When food is cooked, particularly high carbohydrate food that contains starch like potatoes, when it's cooked at a, at a high temperature, specifically about 248 degrees, you get like a kind of a browning effect what happens is that the carbohydrate in the food interacts with a, a particular amino acid called asparag asparagine in the food, and this forms acrylamide. Uh, now, the the thing is that it, it's um, it can uh, acryl acrylamide can be produced through various cooking methods such as frying, roasting, and baking. Again, it occurs when food is cooked under, uh, you know, high carbohydrate food is cooked under high temperatures. Now, acrylamide has caused cancer in animals, uh, but the amount of acrylamide, as is typical in animal studies, when they find these so-called carcinogens or substances that cause cancer, they're usually provided to animals in massive doses, far, far higher doses than humans almost ever consumed. This is the case with artificial sweeteners. When they fed artificial sweeteners to rats, some of the most common artificial sweeteners uh, produce certain types of bladder cancer and other types of cancer in the animals. The problem was that this would be the equivalent of humans eating several pounds a day of these artificial sweeteners, and just that just doesn't happen in, in real life. The same was with acrylamide. When they exposed animals to high doses of acrylamide, it did cause cancer. Uh, now, in 2010, the Joint Food and Agricultural Organization of the World Health Organization Expert Committee on Food Additives, they found that acrylamide is a human health concern, and they suggested long-term studies. Now, as I said, acrylamide was uh, first detected in 2002. Uh, again, it forms some sugars when the amino acid asparagine uh, combines with the sugar in the food under high temperature cooking, particularly frying, roasting, and baking. Uh, now, the uh, acrylamide does not form or forms at lower levels in dairy, meat, and fish products. It's only in like bakery products, potatoes. Uh, if you keep a potatoes refrigerated, uh, it, unfortunately, acrylamide tends to build up in the potatoes. Uh, it's not found in sweet potatoes. Uh, it is found in coffee. Acrylamide occurs in coffee, but again, it probably the high temperature involved in brewing. Interestingly enough, instant coffee contains 100% more acrylamide than normal brewed coffee. Uh, so the um, so as far as um, the uh, the dangers of uh, acrylamide, uh, it could um, again it's associated with they think it could be associated with cancer, but, and there's a couple of things to consider here about acrylamide. For one thing, uh, according to existing studies, about half the acrylamide that you consume is excreted out of the body. So what happens to the other half is still an open question, whether it, you know, whether it actually can cause cancer or heart disease. Now, th there is a association between acrylamide and cardiovascular disease because acrylamide stimulates certain processes like inflammation and, 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 uh, and oxidation that are associated with both cardiovascular disease and cancer. So, uh, you know, the, 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 there's, there's a theory that acrylamide could be involved in ca causing cardiovascular diseases. Potatoes cooked whole were found to have significantly lower acrylamide level than others. So, uh, you know, but French fries are loaded with acrylamide. Uh, the fast food French fries, they're just teeming with acrylamide. So theoretically, if somebody
consumes a junk food diet where they're eating, let's say, French fries every day cooked at high temperature, they're producing a lot of acrylamide in the body. Now, what can you do to avoid this? Oh, by the way, cigarettes are also a major source of acrylamide. Uh, one study showed that uh, cigarettes cause a greater increase, increase in blood acrylamide level. It was three times greater than any food source. So cigarettes, if you smoke cigarettes, you're getting a lot of acrylamide too. Now, the good news is that uh, the liver has a detoxification system, uh, and one particular uh, antioxidant in the body, in the liver especially, called glutathione, can actually detoxify acrylamide and cause it to be excreted. So uh, if you consume, let's say, baked goods, foods cooked at high temperatures, especially carbohydrate foods, it might be a good idea to do things to increase your glutathione level. Probably the easiest way to do that would be to take a supplement called N-acetylcysteine, N-A-C. N-A-C is a dietary precursor for glutathione. Uh, if you increase the glutathione, you probably will do, be going a long way towards preventing any serious health problems with, uh, glu uh, with, uh, from uh, uh, acrylamide. Now, the acrylamide the, uh, is actually not the actual serious concern. What happens is that a metabolite of acrylamide called lysidamide, this is the thing that's really dangerous, and it's produced from acrylamide. However, like I say, glutathione can detoxify this, assuming that you, your body is producing or your liver is producing enough glutathione. Uh, so, um, like I say, you want to avoid... This is one reason to avoid fr uh, a lot of fast foods, which uh, often involve carbohydrates like rolls. You know, all these things are involve carbohydrates uh, that are cooked at high temperatures. Uh, when you expose the high uh, the uh, high temperature, the uh, starch or the carbohydrate to high temperature, as soon as it encounters a protein food that contains aspergine, then you have fo the formation of Ac acrylamide. So, um, what else can I tell you about acrylamide? Really, I think that that's about it. Really, it's a, uh, not much to say, but it's a, it's a substance that could be very harmful. Uh, as bodybuilders and fitness uh, advocates, I'm sure a lot of people already avoid the type of foods that are generally high in acry acrylamide, such as uh, fried potatoes and uh, baked goods. You know, these things are not part of a typical healthy diet for anyone, much less bodybuilders and athletes. So it's probably not a great concern, but it's still something to think about. You know, if you go off your diet, a lot of people like to eat junk foods like French fries and cookies and baked goods and all this stuff, which can, can contain acrylamide. And of course, if you smoke, you're going to be getting a lot of acrylamide. If you drink coffee, you're getting some acrylamide, but you'd have to drink a lot of coffee to get a dangerous level. Uh, however, I, if you can, avoid instant coffee because, as I said, instant coffee contains 100% more acrylamide than regular brewed coffee. So that's about it for this topic. Oh, peanuts also contain acrylamide, as do dried pears and dried plums. So, uh, you know, maybe, you know, try and avoid these type of foods. Uh, don't eat a lot of uh, peanuts because of the acrylamide. Uh, but again, nobody really knows what the toxic level is. They, nobody really knows how efficient the body is in getting rid of acrylamide. So these are things to keep in mind. If you want more information on nutrition, exercise science, anti-aging research, ergogenic aids, hormone therapy, effective fat loss techniques, women's health and fitness, supplement science, all of this is in my Applied Metabolics, www.appliedmetabolics.com, 25 to 40 pages, no advertisements, pure information, evidence-based that includes my 60, over 60 years of constant knowledge, uh, study and knowledge. So subscribe today. I cover topics that you won't find in typical blogs or YouTube videos, kind of off the road stuff. It's really great for trainers or anybody who wants to know the in-depth mechanisms of nutrition and exercise. This is the best publication you could find. I've been a writer for a half a century. I know how to write for the public. There's no heavy technical terms that you need a medical dictionary. And I also include little anecdotes about the golden days of bodybuilding when I trained in the original Gold's Gym with people like Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's, I try to keep it interesting. So 
Again, www.appliedmetabolics.com. When you subscribe, send me an email, and I'll send you an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolic Facebook page, where each day I post new information on nutrition, exercise science, and general health and medicine. Uh, also, I have a email. I have an email uh, portal on my Applied Metabolics webpage, where current subscribers only can send me short questions about anything they've read in Applied Metabolics or anything they're curious about pertaining to nutrition, exercise, and I will answer them in appreciation for their subscription, kind of like a bonus for their subscription. So uh, what else can I say? If, uh, please, if you like my videos, feel free to subscribe to this channel. It's completely free. I post a new video every Tuesday. Please tell others about it, about this channel. Again, it's no BS. It's pure information. Not trying. You notice I'm not trying to sell any products. I'm not associated with any garbage products like green powders and all that garbage that a lot of these video guys, uh, you know, they're, they're paid hefty sums to push these junk products. You'll never see me doing that because I will never sacrifice my integrity to sell a worthless product. And that stuff is worthless. The green powders, garbage, overpriced garbage. Save your money. Anyway, <laughs> that's about it. If you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, go to your local shelter and adopt a dog. Thank you for listening.